When you look up the history of Bobby Hebert and what he means to New Orleans and its NFL franchise, he's viewed as one of the most notable in Saints history. The first quarterback to lead the Houdat to a winning record. The first quarterback to bring them to the playoffs. But to know him, to actually get to know Bobby Hebert is far more colorful than the ink on a stat page. He does it with a lot of flair. Which person doesn't laugh whenever you bring up his name, right? If anybody has somebody as unique as Bobby Bear, I would love to see this person. In Philadelphia, Chicago, New York, Detroit, Miami, because I don't think someone like that exists. He's, he's Bobby Hebert and he's the best. One thing that he was always known for, and you've heard O references and many others references, is that was one tough son of a One of my favorite quotes ever is Jerry Glanville, who coached him in Atlanta, and Glanville said that uh, Bobby Hebert is tougher than a Waffle House steak. You know, he'll say it as, you know, how it is. And that's what the great thing about him is, is he's not going to just say it behind your back. He's going to say it to your face. Now, I know Alabama's defense is dominant, but come on, that's ridiculous. Five first downs. I mean, they're a great defense. LSU is a great defense, but that's ridiculous. Do, do you have a question? No, that's the question. Okay. And Hebert possibly became even more famous after his playing career, working as an entertainer, in his words, for WWL, analyzing each game for the Saints fans at home, the only problem, though, with putting together an oral history. I have so many great Bobby Bear stories. I mean, I have to keep it G-rated, but yeah, there's a lot of great stories. There are so many Bobby Bear stories that I think are just not maybe appropriate for your, your family audience at some times. Well, I remember him uh, standing up in the press box and, and kind of telling the, telling the Jets to stick it. I, I think that's pretty funny. Um, Cowboys fans yelling and calling them cowgirls. Generally, press box cheering is a huge no-no and not allowed. In fact, he has gotten kicked out of LSU games for that in the past. Uh, but they have, it's kind of like an inmate running the prison type of setup in the New Orleans Saints press box, at least in their corner. They kind of know if you're over there, you got to be willing to accept that there may be some cheering. He was messing with the Eagles fans with the fly, eagle, fly chants, leaning over and taunting fans from the press box. E-A-G-L-E-S. But after about the fourth or fifth time. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles! You guys, man, I know what it is. A, that, was a, that was a real heavy set dude. He turned around and he flipped Bobby the number one finger, but not, not, not the index one. But he wasn't always a saint. In fact, signing after a bitter holdout in New Orleans with their arch rival. The Atlanta Falcons. Well, at the time it burned the rivalry hot because Bobby came back in 94, you know, and it was it was kind of a, a weird scenario. Bobby Abair and Morton Anderson in Falcons uniforms. I remember Bobby signing with the Falcons and I was like, holy smoke, the Saints starting quarterback just signed with the Atlanta Falcons. Three years, 10 million at the time, which was a lot of money. In the end though, the boy from Cutoff, Louisiana, hot, hot. still had his heart back in the Bayou State. He's one of us, one of you know the people from you know, the Bayou. He's a South Lafouche guy, so yeah, he's he just blends into the culture, just like Coach O. Man, everybody hears each one of them, and they're like, yeah, he's one of us. He's just a funny dude. You know, he's a Louisiana guy. He's from the Bayou, and I think the fact that he's back now is pretty cool. He doesn't like me saying this publicly, but um, he raised me to be a big Falcons fan. But the thing about him is, his heart was always in. Louisiana. He always sought out a place there. And so when the opportunity came to do radio for the Saints, he absolutely leapt at it. It feels very much like a prodigal son story. And, and like I said, I mean, you will not find a man with more love for Louisiana, the Saints, uh, the founding father of the Houdat Nation and all that. So, so yeah, I mean, there were some rough years in the middle, but um, really his heart has been with the Saints at the end of the day. For your Go Black and Gold, I'm Brian Holland.